rays of light that came from his face. Okay. Uh, I would say, all right, this kind of what we call that uh, styles of presenting the light and shades is very long, heavy kind of light, there. heavy kind of shades of light there, okay? and shadows. Why? Because obviously we can see the whole structures of light characters that be that they actually from from this side of the areas of his face all right and the shadows were basically were were meant to cover basically most of the 80 percent of the areas of his face but if you take a look at the, the whole structures even though from these areas of the nose lips uh, chin Yes, and also this is what we call a backlight. Okay, this is a backlight. You can see some of the light from 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 the left side, right side of the face, the right thing. We call it a black light. And so, if you want to illustrate, basically, you want to transform into illustrations, right? We want to paint basically these basic structures there. Again, okay? the thing that you have to understand is we cannot apply the whole thing. Okay, the shadows kind of uh, painted kind of areas, right? They become totally black or dark, right? We have to leave a little bit kind of space, right? Space of uh, what we call the formations of the structures of light, right? Uh, a form of what we call that the form of the source of light and shadows, okay? At the same time, I think we have also some casted shadows, right? From these areas here. All right, and some of the casted shadow also right here. There, okay. The reflection shadows were basically from right here. There, okay. It will be a little bit difficult, right? It, it's going to be a little bit difficult for you guys to understand as at the moment, right? Okay? But my kind of way of learning, basically, if you can't actually understand the the names of the shadows there, okay? You just have to remember there, okay? If you take a look closely at the level of shadows that have shading from these areas there, they have so one, two, three, four, five, five, and basically have five different kind of tones there. Five different kind of tones, right? Even though the hair colors there, okay? If you saw basically from here, we, we, we Entirely, we saw in black color right here, but if you can see the light areas over here. So practice your eyes observations to see a little bit more details there. And capture the whole thing into shapes. How actually we're going to capture the shadows? Normally from line into shapes there. They will define the form and texture there at the same time all right and also we also have to make uh, value there of tone all right to make the whole composition become harmonized there harmonized mean right look appealing look good into the eyes that when you look in with your eyes okay they look a bit more like easy way to look okay you will find a bit more like a joyful right okay, that you cannot uh, what you call the explain the feelings if you saw some of the beauties of these compositions get well together there okay so that's why okay let me actually right keep a little bit of time now understanding here i already captured the face there right just now Right. So what you can do from here? All right. You see here, they're right. <laughs> if you for the drawing layers there, okay. Hopefully there. Right. So if you look closely, they're right thing. Okay? And we are going to put it to the gradient map, right?
accesibile la zi, dar sunt frate unde vede level sunt frate. Right? You see the whole difference kind of because a lot of people normally like when they actually start to play or study the shades of shadows, they're right. They will start to paint like this one. Let me show you guys a bit how it works. I'm going to use Maybe we can show you guys using the saw brushes like this. Alright, saw brushes like this. Saw brushes, normally we can use a lot of things. Just like using those saw pastel or charcoal here. Okay. But I'm going to reduce the flow here. Okay. My kind of reductions for, for, for controlling the pressure, especially when I want to paint directly, is quite extreme directly. Normally I'm going to use around 1%, 2%, depending on how strong basically the pressures are going to be form when I actually paint it up, right? So if I can control from 6% or okay, the shadow shades, and then I can control back again the, the, the pressure there, right? I will stay with this kind of uh, percentage of flows there. But it's all depending on the way actually going to control them, right? If I'm not have confident enough, I'm going to use 2% only there, okay? 2% I have to paint a little bit more there, right? From there, okay? So I'm going to press a little bit left. Like, but not press too hard there, okay? You have to understand how actually you're going to connect it, right, okay? And coordinate with your, with your pressure point, right, which works. All right, now. Normally, I'm going to use round, right? This is my kind of what we call that learning understanding there. Okay, shading here, right? If you're going to work with it. If you take a look at how actually you're going to shade, even though normally in digital operations, I'm going to do with outline first. But this is basically is about uh, working with the traditional method in digital media there, right? Okay, so I'm going to use like I'm using pastel or charcoal, the dark pastel or charcoal, right? Okay? So if I use pastel, right, I'm going to shade a bit like that. Okay, take a look here there. I'm going to shade a bit here. Like this. Adjust the size a bit to control the pressure line. And then I'm going to study the shadows there. Here. Right? Press a little bit some of the areas there, right? Okay. One of the best things is when you learn about observing these techniques there, right? Never underestimate the techniques that you use basically to paint, okay? To move your hands there. If you can see, right? Okay, the way that I actually conduct my, uh, my paint kind of start, okay? I'm using according to the with the basic structures of the elements of the base there. Here's the size, the bit, right? To cover some of the areas here. You're going to be surprised that you can see the shadows there. We tackle the shadow, we tackle the basically the shadows, right? Some of the areas right here is a bit more dark to there, right? So that means we have to press a little bit more. Of course, okay, this kind of techniques a little bit going to be uh, a culture shock for some of you guys, I think. But uh, as I told you guys before, if you guys really want to learn, okay, if some of you guys were thinking, okay, there, is there any shortcut, okay, to work with this kind of uh, learning process there? Right now, what I'm going to do, I'm uh, basically what I actually show you guys here, right? It's one of the shortcut way to learn. Right? See how fast it's like create those kind of books there. Based on the uh, methods of learning using those pictures to draw back again on top of it. But some of the areas I didn't paint too much there, right? Okay? I leave with it kind of highlights over here. It's just a size. It's work. That's what I said, okay? All these kind of methods that we actually go through. If you don't put yourself into it, you don't focus there, right? you won't be able to get it right. Okay? The shadows right? so if, I'm going, if, you, if I'm going to adjust a bit on the levels, adjust it on the levels here. Of course, we can't see because the, the level of tone is not that thick there. Right? But I, if I duplicate the layers, you guys can see the, the whole shades of shadows that appears from these photos, right, okay, that I use, your friend, 
as a part of my reference there to capture the light and shadows there. But if you take a look right now, I didn't actually press too much. I didn't actually land it too much directly when it comes to paint basically the shadows there. I leave some of the areas right to get a, a value of tones and a form that define basically the structures back again. Of course, this is not the ready made or what we call that uh, a very perfectly done portrait kind of illustration. There. We study shapes and shadows, there, but we're using people's face. Definitely. Right. I just want to show you guys basically how actually we look at things in different ways at this time there. To study the shadows there. Leave it the highlights, white colors for the lighting areas there, okay? for the light areas there. So how actually we define them? All right, this, I want to show you guys also the values of working with the brushes. Okay, not by shadings. Let's just say that we want to add some drums here. Okay, as long as you can. Now, just now we're studying light and shadow stay right. Okay, light and shadow stay right. So I'm going to combine this one there because they look a little bit more like uh, more promising for the combination of those shadings there. Now, let me test back again our first few exercises about. drawing line okay so right now what i'm going to do i'm going to draw a very sketch line already even though the pictures doesn't actually quite clear there okay but i'm using my kind of understanding there hopefully you guys can build up also this understanding from time to time okay i'm not actually saying that you are going to get this kind of methods of workings right in the short time unless you were get ready to practice directly but when I draw the highlight uh, what we call that sorry right not the highlight the eyebrow for the for this picture is the right I'm basically using okay, take a look at how I actually draw the nose there. I'm not actually draw the whole thing there I guess I'm not actually going to draw the whole structures of the nose there but I'm using some of the methods of okay, draw the nose here is there take a look closely how I actually I start to draw the nose All right. So the shapes over here is not really actually fine and well. So take a look there, guys. Okay, how I actually like work with the shadows and shapes. Even though my kind of attention is not drawing his portrait, but I try to use her, uh, his basically face as a reference there to work there. I draw those eyebrows. Take a look how actually I conduct the strokes and line that define basically the eyes. Right? If you cannot see clearly, okay, this is what you can do. Adjust back again. Right? And then you can see some of the areas of the eyes a little bit, right? The shapes of the eyes and the formations of the shapes of the eyes there. So what you can do? Use them back, we draw, paint it up, right? Okay, take a look there, right? How I draw the eyes here. So to balance them up directly. Right? But from here, I didn't use those, uh, what you call that, the drawing structures that, that we supposed to do first, right? Okay, for the exercise there. I just using a very Quick kind of sketch line there, okay? Check look how I actually draw the hairline there. Okay? The hairline. So the stroke for the hairlines are going to be a little bit different here. And of course, what basically I've been told you guys, okay, if we cannot get the the actual kind of full portrait of him the right. As an illustrator, we need to 
we need to improvise our pictures there. Unfortunately, they're right. We need to. The daughter is the right. We need to improvise our pictures there. So what we can do from here? I draw the. Let the sound going to adjust with the size. So I'm going to just paint basically. Uh, withdraw basically his glasses there, right? Using the size or change the size there. Because if I use thick brush strokes for the glasses, they will define the depth of field there, right? Okay? The distance between the eyes and also the, the glasses here. It's a very sketch, uh, it's a very fast sketch kind of techniques there, guys, right? Very fast kind of techniques here. It's just like again the size of the brushes. So how actually I draw the lips? I'm going to start with the with the lips line letters. And then start with the with the upper lips and the lower lips together there, right? Yeah. Then I'm going to draw the strokes. Take a look how actually I draw the stroke there. I didn't actually try to draw like this. Huh? Slowly move my hands to conduct, to coordinate with the hands, right? With the areas of the line there, okay, to work. Sketch line a little bit, right? Sketch line the shadows areas there, okay? Now, the neck. So I didn't focus too much there, right here on the decay. But the lines will be more smoothly there. So what happens here? I really hate to draw people without a full kind of what we call that head there, right? Okay? Because it looks like I cut them up, right? So I'm going to improvise them back. I just imagine maybe the shapes of the hair are going to be low like this. Okay? So if we close this one. Then we are going to add the areas of the shadows. You can see basically we have the whole structure of portraits, basic kind of shadows that actually appear from this illustration. All right. So if you want to add a little bit kind of details, maybe you can use erasers a bit. All right. To delete some of the areas right here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Maybe this series. Right. Brush. Stop brushes. Right. Then I'm going to adjust basically the shadow series there and paint right here a bit more. You add a bit more values of tone. So if you actually have understand how basically the the methods is working you right. Okay. So wait a second there. Now, so from there, I think from the guide kind of photos that we have, this not there, right? I try to use basically back again my kind of understanding to retain there, okay? the areas there. Simply there, okay? we are not actually focusing on the details there, but if you can actually add. The very basic understanding is like this, right? To work with your drawing skills, the illustration kind of skills is more than enough. Okay? We can actually apply, or okay, we can actually add <coughs> more and more and more kind of values, right? From this portrait there, okay? By using a very limited kind of sources. 
So the strongest kind of elements that we have right here is not all about the shading. The shading is one of the supporting elements that we actually have when it comes to illustrate these illustrations. But what are the most important things that actually make the illustrations a little bit more appealing and strong? Is, is what? Is the line. Okay, is the line there, right? As simple as that. That's why I really want you guys to focus when it comes to develop your skills, first, your skills directly, especially the, the, the beginners, right? Okay? The newbies, or what we call that, the, the person who actually has zero knowledge. You want to start to illustrate or, or practice your kind of skills, start with your line, please. If you can develop your quality of line, all the things that you have worried before, right? For example, here, okay, I'm going to add a bit kind of uh, yes, uh, layers over here to add some sort of glasses reflections there, right? A glasses reflections. There, right? Maybe I can actually add this kind of glasses reflections on top of the layers there. If I actually have a very strong kind of confidence, right, that LD cannot back and flat before, okay? To show a bit kind of distance there in my illustration. Okay? And of course, right, the lips itself, you can add a bit kind of shading there. Right? Shadows. That is going to form the dimension of the lips. Look easy there, right? This is basically a quickest way for you guys to experience how to paint or how to illustrate that. Right? But either you can actually follow this kind of quick scheme of learning illustrations, you ask yourself back again whether it's worth it or not. Is it worth it? Go for it then. But you guys have experience right now, I'm going to share also with your friends later on. So the key point from this drawing is all about the shadings and outline. The shading is nothing much like it, as long as you know the directions of the light and shadows that along with it. We're not actually, I'm not trying to force you guys not to follow whatever that you have seen, saw from those internet about the, the way to paint it. Right? So I'm going to get those. Right. Shadows there. As simple as that. So to understand a little bit more on the theories of those things, these are going to be the reflections, shadows, right? Reflection shadows, right? That bouncing shadows there, right? That appear from this form, right? So But the shadow as we form off right here, there we're going to be called the cast of shadow there. Okay. So, so this is basically what we can actually experience for this week. But before that, okay, but before that. One of the simple exercise that you guys can go through. Okay, any questions so far? I'm using two different brushes there. First brushes for the shadows, I'm using soft brown brushes. Right? Right? 
brushes. My kind of recipe strategy for the flow from those brushes are going to be around uh, 2% to 4%. Depending there, okay, you have to test with your, your way of controlling those brushes there. Right, the outline are going to be any brush that you want. You can use towel, hot, ultimate hot pencil, okay, right? Maybe if you use the new versions. But I'm using all media wet flow brush. Right, the name of the brush is there. Okay, that's works. This technique basically I'm teaching digital operations. The challenge maybe I'm going to have next is this. I have to show a bit more advanced kind of techniques. That one I'm going to be afraid a little bit of. So if I'm afraid that if most of you guys will succeed with this method that I show you guys, okay, these investors, uh, I believe that the challenge is to me that they have to go a little bit more advanced. Okay? But normally, um, what basically I have in mind, normally if I want them, plan the writing, I'm going to go into more conceptual kind of methods of techniques, all right? Uh, for other kind of recorded lessons there. But the problem that, that I always saw from the student itself, right? Uh, they hard basically did. For, for those who actually have a zero understanding knowledge that you, you need to learn from beginning the writing, if you don't actually paint, practice yourself every day and develop your own kind of routine to develop your skills, it takes more than two or three semesters for you to develop this kind of understanding. I don't actually try to discriminate or, or what you call that, uh, low down a bit on your efforts there because I really want you guys to explore this kind of method because if you take a look basically okay, how actually I managed to work with the with these methods it's not that hard. You just have to think before you paint, before you draw. And you learn you need to learn to control basically your pressure because I saw a lot of people there right? when they paint something right okay, they really paint a very hard kind of strokes there. Right. It's just like when, when they paint it, right, okay, the whole, uh, what we call that, areas of shadows basically are going to be look like this one. Um, they don't actually change a lot on the clothes. And suddenly when they paint it, right, okay, they look like this. Okay, this one. This is what happens a lot, all right? Yeah, like that. But... This one will basically, if you check it closely there, right? Oh, oh, yeah. oh lucky that I can add to this, but it doesn't appear there. They paint like this one, right? They start to paint like this. But basically, it's not that. It's not that. Say that, that it's wrong there. But the problem is, if you paint in very dark kind of tones, you're not going to be have a lot of time to to control that and the pressure there, right? Even though from these methods normally, right, you can actually actually use these effects. Then you can use also opacity that it works. Right? But this is not the methods that we want. We don't want to use a lot of artificial kind of effects when it comes to introduction to illustrations. This is not the 
the, the, the main objective why we learn that. We want to learn because we want to understand the whole kind of traditional kind of way to develop your understanding by working with your hands. Right? To develop the understanding of how to paint shade the shadows in the right way. Okay? Any questions there so far? What is it that long? Hmm? What is it done there? Because I use your faith there. You should be a little bit kind of blessed there, I think, because you have the very strong kind of light and shadows right here on your screen. There. I could use her, Wing Yin. Right, I could use her or her there, okay? You see the backlight, okay, Jin Yi, right? Right, the backlight over here. The light came from here, very strong light, okay? From now on, right, even though she's actually trying to hide her face today, all right? In she there, right, okay? She has a very strong kind of lights over here. Lot from top, uh, light from the top and from the side there, okay? Jing Tech there, okay? There has a strong light and shadows over here, you see? So, from now on, one of the things that you have to you have to develop this kind of senses there, right? By when you look at things from now on, see where the directions of light and shadows were basically being formed or covered the, the whole structure there first. Then you're going to train it, even though you don't paint at a time, but please your eyes to train your mind to think about this kind of uh, learning experience here, right? Because we have to go through with it, right? Just like we eat every day, right? For example, right? when you eat every day, you know what kind of food that you want to eat for that day, right? So you really understand your your kind of menus that you want. Right? The same goes when you want to draw or you want to illustrate something later on. Because all these senses of understanding, <coughs> sorry, right? when it comes to draw your own character, for example, right? this is what I, uh, this is what I want to. Add right, okay. Let's just say you want to draw a very simple character like this one, right? What is this? I don't know, right? Then you're going to use a mix of the brushes there later on, right? Let's just say I'm using rough on bristles, okay? And I'm going to paint like here, there, okay? Not changing the flow yet. Okay, the thing is right now, you want to cover these areas from light and shadow here, okay, for the characters, right? Okay? You have to lock this where basically you're going to paint them up. Alright? Where the directions of light and shadow okay? You have to lock as an illustrator, as a designer, as a creator, there, right? You have to learn to lock them up. So I'm going to lock these areas here like this. Simply, right? Okay? Very chin chai there, okay, kind of methods there. So you can see the light and shadows came over there. Maybe I can actually repair a bit, okay? Adjust a little bit, right? To make it a bit more kind of peeling from here. Then these areas I'm going to add a little bit kind of values of tone there. Right? Too much a little bit. Right? Take a look at it. And maybe I'm going to add a little bit kind of different kind of light and tone for the backlight there, okay? Backlight energy. It has a size. Okay, this is the backlight energy. We apply them back, huh? All right, the highlights itself. This is basically the base color, there, right? The base color of skin tone. Maybe the highlights came over here. Yeah. Okay. For example, you can see there, right? The shadows there. The shadows in light there, okay? So the next thing that you want to do, okay, for example, we want to design a character, so right? We want to design a character. Yeah. Simple kind of shapes, all right? Even though normally, if you want to design this kind of character, so right? Uh, design kind of uh, what we call that workflows, we need to add some new layers there, okay? Because if you add new layers, normally we can actually have a more proper kind of way of toning them. 
So the if you take a look at how actually I paint it up here, I didn't use purely black for my color selections. I didn't use pure black. Yet. So the secret of my kind of way of working, or some of the illustrators other than me, rarely you can use black right here. You have to try it. you do have to know how to do shit right here. So I'm using selections. This one a little bit advanced like that, okay? So if you don't actually understand how it works, it's okay. I just want to show you guys the, the impact of working with this kind of method. Right? If you really understand how it works, okay? Right? okay? So I'm using light and shadows at the same time, okay, for these areas. Yeah. Right? The foot itself. Yeah. Right. Okay, well, what else there, okay? The eyebrows. Even though normally, right, okay, uh, when we draw this kind of methods, you have to always, always what we call that add new layers for some of the elements that you find you need to improve on the on the shading state around you okay so this is only a demonstration step too much that's what i say right if you draw a little bit too much sometimes uh, they will be a bit kind of misconducted of those words. So what I can do right now, don't worry, is that okay? You said okay, I'm drawing too fast, right? Okay, you can actually take a peek on that, right? Okay? This is only a demonstration. Okay? Like the shadows over here, see the light and shadows there that I saw there, okay, from here? Because the light came over here, some of the area has been, has been covered already, okay? but sometimes also play some tricks there. So, what else we can do from here? I can draw the foot. This, right? <clears throat> yeah. And at the same time, I can also draw using those using those black colors. Okay, right? Uh, not black colors, but uh, different kind of brushes. Right? Draw those hands. Okay, hands. If you don't understand about the alignment and proportions, you might going to draw the hands right here or maybe here. Okay, what I'm going to be going to design about the strikers, I'm going to balance them up. So this is the hands. Yeah. Right, the simple kind of design that based on light and shadows that that can be formed. The light and shadows at the same time there, right? Okay? So you can actually add a bit kind of details if you want to uh, combine them, right? Okay? Combine the, the, the elements of line shapes, okay, to define the form itself. So whatever that you guys been go through later on, okay, it will come to this. Not you design the same characters, you will design your own characters there. But by using a certain kind of methods that you guys can apply from the lessons that you have been going through there. A simple characters that look appealing though. Okay? There's a lot of things we can do from here. If you want to. Right. You guys can actually add some sort of like the glasses for this dude there, right? That's what I say, right? If you actually understand what you will then go through, you will go through later on. Your journeys are going to be more exciting there, I think, from time to time. You just have to be a little bit more creative than you work with it. Right. There's a lot of things we can do. Um, maybe I'm going to draw some sort of outline over here, bit, right? You have to add a bit kind of texture there. Outline, they become uh, the line of strokes, they become a texture. There. This one also we consider as a texture, right? the shadow that they define the form itself. Right? So there's a lot of things, guys, that we can do from here. I'm doing this kind of things is a little bit kind of work, like like spontaneous therapy, based on what I think in my mind already. Well, but if you may ask me later on, okay, how actually I get this kind of idea there? 
it came from my experience over there, okay? Maybe I saw some of the videos about the people that are gay characters, right? Uh, lately, so I did find them back, right? So I didn't actually push myself to to become someone else there, okay? I try to be myself, but by the same time, I try to get to understand why and how I did all this kind of thing. Okay? So if you took a look at it right here, you can see a lot of harmonized kind of combination of form, colors, and shapes there, right here, and shapes together right here with this design. Alright. So before I'm going to ask you guys questions, we're going to do some simple kind of exercises. Using the ellipse tools, which is shapes, add new layers there, right? Click to the shape, click shape, and create one of the form of shapes there, right? Like this. What you can do? What you can do from to learn the shadow picture? First of all, you have to define which are the areas of light and shadow there. I'm going to demonstrate. For you guys, okay, one demonstration step is using soft brushes. But if someone says, okay, is there any advance? Basically, I have already give you guys some advanced tactics here. Before I actually did this one, right? So I'm going to use a very soft brush step is, right? For the shadows here. But first of all, every single form that we're going to draw, there has a base color there. You decide what are the base colors there. For me, maybe around 65%, alternate backspace there. 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 Right? To define the color there. And make sure you also define also which kind of color that you can use. Um, if you want to use swatches, go with it. But my kind of way, I'm a little bit kind of maybe adventurous there, right? So I'm going to use my own adjustment on the sliders for the hue saturation brightness there. You can, you can find from the windows there, right? So, of course, to make sure that I have select these areas, make sure the selection areas are going to be uh, being active all the time there. What you can do from here, if you just simply deselect the area control leader, okay, what you can do, you go to layers, right here, the layers that we have formed the shapes, click control, and click to the layers there, okay? You've been active there, right? So what you can do right here, yeah, these are basically the circle, right, okay, shapes there, right? The name, add new layers. These are going to be our shadows areas. What we can do from here. We already defined the colors there, okay, the value of tone direction from here. So I'm going to pay okay. Let's just say the lighting came from or we all maybe from here, based on your friend photos just now. There, right? So how actually we define that? First of all, we can paint it up. You see the soft brush at the end side, change the size. Make sure you don't paint the whole thing. And when I paint, I didn't paint like this vertical there, okay, or horizontal. I will paint a little bit kind of diagonal there, see? Diagonal there. I move to the curve there, right? See? So the next thing is adjust a bit more and paint a little bit more from here. See? To see the shading, shades of light there. Right? The backlights over here, there, right? I didn't touch too much there. So the next thing what we can do, add a bit kind of tone, so we here, it's just the size, size of the brushes, right? Now, my job is, our job is to add some highlights, okay? the highlights over here, do some highlights over there, and we find the back light, right? so this is really the hot spot, I think, for the shadows, for the light there. Easy, right? I'm using 11%. If you have to use reduce more than that, it's okay. Go with it. Look like a 3D there, right? 
feel like 3D ball there, I feel like a snooker or really good ball there, right? but it's not. So how to define basically these areas has a cast of shadows there. This is basically the form shadows, the cast shadows from the surface there, right? Add new layers. What I can do, adjust a little bit on the brushes and paint. Okay. That's the size of the tone of values of tone. Okay. To define the areas of shadows. So the car shadows has to be a little bit more to the left and to the right side. Here. Okay. Adjust a little bit and blend it up. Okay. So the surface, the, the sphere basically just look like, just like uh, what we call that. We we paint, right? Uh, you try to paint on top of the surface, and you want to define basically the form of the of the sphere become a bit more logic on the platform. There, right? it's not it doesn't look so thin. All right. So how to define that? Let's we Google it. Easy, right? It's not that hard there to learn about it. But the way that we're going to paint the flows, right, the way that we move our hand to paint based on the form or the structures of the shapes there. Always remember that. Let me check it right here. Uh, light and shadow there. You just can copy it at the same time if you want to. Light and shadow there. How to define them using those? Uh, drawing there. So, take a look at the eggs. Right. The names of the, the elements of the shadow. See about it right Sorry, right here. The reflections, so cats, shadows. So, what is it like I have in mind? Right. When you want to learn about all this basic understanding, it's not that hard. Right? Normally, we are going to use uh, well, basically on the raw materials or like a charcoal, I think. Cast a shadow that define the shadows that actually been formed, okay? From the object itself, I right? think. Occlusion shadow is the shadows that actually nearby the form there, right? The flashing shadows, as I told you guys, right, even though you can see the light from here is basically from the shadows that reflect, okay, from the light. Right? So the core shadows, basically, they're the most thick or dark kind of areas of tone there, right, okay? Half tone shadows, highlights, and center light, right, okay? Yeah, they define the shadow, the light directions there. Simple there, guys. Simple there, guys. Right? Take a look at the faces there, right? Okay, how actually we define them. It's all based on the basic structures. Basic structures there. So when we define the form of shadows from the photos uh, of the portrait itself, okay, or the body structures or different kind of elements, it will define based on the constructed kind of directions of that form that define the shadows there. So you cannot just simply paint. For example, like we have the, let me say we have what we call that. I'm going to use a lasso. All right, we have a lasso over here. Let me say triangle. There, right. we have a triangle over here. But I'm not going to use triangle here. I'm going to use um, cone here, right? Tip of a cone here. The 
think it's not that practical like you do. Mm. Because I don't want you guys to get confused. Let me try this. Let us say I'm using the lasso tools that you work on. But let us say we have a point. It's not that quite accurate if you can check it right here, but it's okay. So we're going to use that base color vectors. Alternate that space. Oops. Alternate that space there. Alright, this is the base color of the corner, I think. If the light came over here, how is it going to paint the shadows there? Right? So when I paint the shadows, I'm going to paint like this. Right? I'm going to paint like this one. See the, mo the movements of my tone, right? Of my paint. So curve line as it is. To show the to show the dimensions there of this surface. There. So cast shadows a bit. A bit more kind of dark tone. Change the size there. And then the light there I can't do. And a bit turn up. I like that. Okay. Yeah. In the form itself. The dimension that you can see from it, even though some of the areas doesn't look right here, like this, I really admit that. So the shadows are going to be formed for the cast shadows. I'm going to be right here. Yeah. Soft light, right? Okay. Soft light, very soft, right? Okay. The, the shadows basically near the, the form are going to be a little more darker, right? What we call that? Yeah. Right, the occlusion shadows, right? To define the form. If you take a look at this picture, that how to draw rocks, I okay? Every tone of value of tone of the shadows and shapes were defined by the structures itself, right? Logically, right? This is the wood lock, all right? These are the stone or papers there. Uh, there's a concave and Cone effects kind of shoots the right okay, that is form the structures there. So every surface has different kind of way of working with the tone itself. So we just need to define it first before we go to apply that again to our structures. Right. It's not entirely black, right? You cannot actually draw entirely black, right? It's dark, right? I never actually work like that, right? And it doesn't have to supposed to work like that, okay? So the light came over here, the shadows are going to be formed off of you. As simple as that, you have to remember that. Then how to define them, depending how sensitive you are when you, <coughs> when you look at the form itself, right? Okay, so about the exercise for this bit, um, I'm going to give you guys also some reference, some photos there to define that, right? Okay, using the same methods of techniques. So you guys just wait how how it can going to work there. Okay, so what we can do right now at the moment, okay, uh, what we can actually practice there. We need to define the shadow type shape using this method step. So let us say that when you want to define them here, right? We work with the kind of shadings. Even though we can work with the with the pictures that you guys are going to have later on. So what we can going to experience okay for this week, we're going to work with some of the pictures, okay, that you find the shadows. 
but we're going to do a bit more like this one of just okay learn a bit kind of basic structures of human face and then we define the shadows in using the different kind of source of light i think if you take a look here right now the source of light direct from the front top right they're going to define top from the left side and right here this is the bottom here light thing how to define the shadow from there i'm going to give you guys those pictures that don't worry there right here this came from top right here so all the structures came from the cover from the faces they're going to be a bit more like a different kind of shadow tone there right okay this is came from the back light there right here but no lighting from here there, okay so that the whole things cover with the shadows there so all this kind of understanding, I'm going to give you guys some examples, some photos, reference for you guys to work with. Okay? So if you want to practice yourself, okay, while you're waiting, sitting, at the moment you can, okay, don't worry about it. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a bit kind of samples of photos as a reference. Okay, this is a very good reference that you work. So photos, reference, okay, but we're not actually draw from here. Okay? This is a very good example that you guys can check. Okay, if you guys love to draw this anime, manga, saga, right? Okay? This is one of the good examples that you guys can actually develop this kind of understanding. But I say, okay, learn from observations. Okay? Always, always learn from observations. Okay? Right now, this one, okay, he defined basically the basic structures based on the base, very simple kind of shape that is. And then the next pictures, they will render them back, right? Okay? You can render them back, right? Using the tone itself, right? Okay? It's a very good kind of what we call the activities here. But define the line first before you develop those kind of structures here. Okay, for the shadings. Right. So, how actually I'm going through with this, okay? Sometimes I don't know whether I'm actually fair enough to use this kind of methods to work through it. Okay? So if I want to work with that kind of understanding that if you saw this kind of pictures right here, okay, that you apply the same methods of understanding there, right? What you can do from here. First of all, define first the areas of the shadow. Okay? Yeah, okay. Find the areas of shadows there. This is how actually I see things, but of course, if you go back into the methods that I do there, okay, I'm I'm not actually try to copy the whole thing there, okay, but I try to improvise a bit. Okay. The areas of the faces. Shadows of the face, okay. even though the eyes, right? We have to define a bit where the directions of the eyes are, otherwise, we won't be able to see things there. So, the next thing, what we can do, we define some of the areas of the highlights from here. Basically, there is a highlight skin from the hair there, okay? But we can't see clear there okay, because of the focus is not that high resolution. But it's okay. I did the whole structure back again. Right, if you take a look at my brush right now, I'm using a very low kind of flow for the brush. See the difference there, okay? Different shade of the shadows areas. For some of you, say that if you thought that you didn't have those artistic kind of point of views, don't worry, sir. Learn from the shape, okay? Turn the whole thing into shapes that shadows into shapes that is. Okay? Then you will learn how also to refine them better. Right? I try to duplicate the layers like this. One of the reasons I duplicate the layers, if I use this, uh, what we call that, threshold. Threshold kind of the threshold, okay? 
is you can define basically the shadow of something. This is what people see or designers saw, right? The element of shadows that you find from the photos itself. Okay. So what we can do from here, I can actually just more on the effects of this, just to define a bit more. But don't follow these patterns, Stella. Okay. A lot of people make mistake. They photo follow these patterns, they become a bit weird. Okay. They look a bit more like a, like a skin kind of disease on your illustration. You don't want that kind of things there, right? Unless you want to use it as a part of the staff that it works. All right. But it's a guide for us to paint back again those structures. There. All right. And I always, always doesn't define, right, to draw a portrait out of this reference. I never, never define that. Okay? But my kind of understanding it's only to develop basically our process of developing our understanding to work with the shapes, light, and shadows. That's all. Right? That's basically the thing that we want to study here. I never, I never put myself in the position of to draw his portrait there. I never did. But the way that I studied back again these photos, based on my strokes and line, they define the process. Line. But it's not entirely a perfect kind of process. We study only the light and shadows at the beginning of the process, but a little bit kind of advanced techniques. Because I have to work also with this kind of pattern to do that. Otherwise, you won't be able to see the things clearly directly, and you don't find the challenge based on that. You only simply paint it. Okay? A lot of people just simply paint it. Okay? They don't actually see through the things or they don't actually think when they draw that. Okay? Okay, all the patterns that, that I create basically, right? All the patterns that I create were not for, for us to trace them back. Just to guide us, then we use our observations kind of experience here to to paint them back. For example, if you want to put a side like this side by side, your reference here. You just want to define basically the difference, okay? And the tones of value of tone that you find from here. But if you take a look right now, <clears throat> okay, the way that I paint the shadows from here, there, right? I'm still not defining this area as a, as a uh, what we call it, some sort of shades over here that, that we can paint. So, what I can do, I'm using soft brushes back again, right? Soft round brushes. Then, we find basically the colors back again. Okay. Right? The shadow too. So as I actually look at the reference photos, right? I try to define a bit more details. Okay? But not cover the whole thing there yet. And I never try to attempt to draw exactly as I saw and never done. Because in the illustrations, what are the best thing about it? You need to improvise the thing that you saw all the time. Right? Improvise the thing that you saw all the time. If you saw the whole thing entirely in black colors, they right. Don't let your mind play tricks on you. Always try to improvise and try to enhance back again the methods of working. Too much here, five percent, maybe three percent. Right? Just the tone itself. I think if you use the size, this size is quite not convenient for you to clean. So just the size back again, then you clean a bit more better. But I find this brush is a little bit more thick. 
or maybe the value of percentage of colors that are used is to make a motif color. I'm not entirely color the whole thing into black. I leave some of the space of tone to make a dimension of this major thing. Okay. So when you actually add a bit more and more details, the whole structures of form from these photos will be appeared at the end in three dimensional kind of looks, even though you, you paint in that color. The whole entire kind of sheets beginning to form, beginning to appear there. Don't worry about it. how to draw the hair color letter. Right. How to draw the hair color thing. Later you can work on that. Study the shapes and shadows there. But you want to learn a bit more, there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of ways, there's a lot of tutorials that you can do with. Okay? Don't worry about that. Learn one step at a time, but if you want to learn a bit a bit on an advanced, go ahead. You can practice and experiment that first, you okay? Make mistakes, right? Always dare to make mistakes when you learn that okay? I did a lot of mistakes okay, from this illustration and this problem. But it didn't stop me to practice a bit more and more and more. Okay? I always find a way to develop those kind of understanding. Right guys? Any questions so far? No? Is it right? Um uh, yes, okay. Some people that like, they actually uh, Call that message me that I think they told me they asked me whether um, the way that they draw is right or not. I think I just simply asked them right, to work back again, look back again to my demonstrations how it works. Then you guys can see more clear, I think, how I keep my hands in the right way that I think it works. All right, let me check. Okay, let me check a little bit now. Your works. Mm. Okay, week four, I have to let me check the attendance there for a second. All right, Jiayi is here. Jiayi. Yes. Uh, Ying Chi is here. Yes. Wei Yin. Yes. Jin Yi. Yes. Uh, Tae Yu. Yes. All right, Saira Adelaide. Right. Uh, Ziti. Yes. Gilbert. Yes. Tae Sin. Yes, I'm here. All right, Zhu Yin. Lai Zhu Yin is here. Christian? Yes. Jawi? Yes. Wen Xin? Yes. All right, Zheng Zhang, you see? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, uh, sir, sir, sir. Yeah? Uh, Lai Zhuyun, Lai Zhuyun, sorry. Lai Zhuyun here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Xin Yi? Yes. Uh, Zhuyun? You here? Yes, yes, I'm here. All right, Mayhui. Mayhui is here. Yan Ying. Yes. Ka Huang. Yes. Uh, Jin Tak. Yes. All right, Sanjay. Uh, yes. You here, Sanjay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in one. Yes. Right. Where did you, Sanjay? Right. Gilbert, I see the face there. Right. Can I see your face there, Sanjay? 
Awe, so let me turn on my lights. Oh, you cannot, you cannot actually connect to your cameras, right? I always imagine that you maybe look like a Bollywood kind of guy there, right? Is it, uh? All right, guys, okay. Um, okay, let me check, okay? Let me check. Let me actually go through a bit on the, some of the things that, that our friends have been working on. There. Okay, we still have time there, right? Okay, I did give I, I did give some of the comment from one of our friends there right here. I don't know whether it's from your group or the other group there right here. But hopefully that comment doesn't actually make you feel down a little bit because I just asked him or her directly to withdraw back again, okay? According to our way to control the prices there. Yes. If seventy two directly, people that we have seen. Check see right there. Let's open up here. Well, I have to download that. Put it right here, there, okay? This is from you, is it right? Why this one doesn't look the same there at you right? You draw from the imagination view. Uh, this one there, right? You draw from your own imagination there, right? How come this one doesn't have the relief there? Alright, basically Sira has has a very good kind of combinations of understanding there, I think, on this stroke there, right? I mean this girl can draw well, right? can draw well. Hopefully they're right, because the stroke is very common with the That's one of the good examples that we have, okay, uh, from the lessons here. Um, I don't think I have a lot of comment or problem from, from her kind of examples there. Let me see, right, okay. Because we saw... Previously, 
longer than this. But the point is right now that you're good there, right? Okay? Don't draw the eyebrows too much, right? Or eyelash too much, right? Okay? To draw the pressure strokes, right? Okay? The patterns or the texts from this area has to be improved with it on the line. Okay? Don't draw too much. Otherwise, they're going to look a bit more like, uh, what do you call that? Uh, like a garlic there, right? Okay? Oh, not garlic there. They look like a... Uh, a bit kind of like uh, what you call that old, right? All right, orange there, right? It's like a, not a, like a, what you call that, but it's not that too bad, right? Because I can see that we have the quality of strokes over there, but a little bit kind of understanding when you draw the hairline strokes, right? The lines of the that you find there, uh, the iris, right, and the teeth here, there, right? But the strokes are there, but right? this one is too much there. The nose also doesn't look right, right? The slits again. Careful when you draw them. Right, careful guys, okay, when you draw okay, this doesn't have those right kind of structures there. This one look, look okay. Look good. It's still okay. there. A lot of improvements, right? Same goes to this one already. Even though some of the areas can be improved a bit more, but it's not that big issue there. But the, the hair of those tails also have to be careful with, right? Because if you draw, if you saw the way I draw the tails, I think you can do like this one, right? Check it back again. How the strokes look like. So far, it's not that bad, okay? Not that bad, right? The strokes are bad. But some of the areas, it, you do, it will find a little bit kind of confusing when you draw the strokes there. Right? Especially on the shadows, especially on the textures or the form of the structures that we do. Right? So be careful with it, right? Okay? A little bit more naive kind of drawing. Especially on the eyes, right? And one of the things that I didn't actually use, uh, what we call the draw, I didn't combine the line together between the loops. I never did. Okay? And if you take a look at most of the line of the drawing, line drawings, I think, they don't actually combine the lips that together with everything. But some of the areas of the strokes, it looks not there. Okay? But the problem is, I didn't saw this kind of basic structure problems. So maybe they are happy. This one has to be developed with more understanding, right? When you see the product structures like this, it doesn't look right. And this one looks a little bit kind of understanding, right? Like this. It's not that hard that we need. Basic structures have to be developed with more. Right? We don't actually seem to draw the structures there. We try to define them to make sure that we understand how actually they will look, work on that if you want before without looking or have a reference with you that has to be a little bit more, right? The basic structure. Too. So it's not that bad, okay, because I saw your friends okay, before this like Phil Sunder again. He has a little bit kind of Confusion on the drawings. So that means these drawings have to be input to the Right? He never, he didn't actually reply my comment yet. Hopefully, he don't actually feel down a little bit already on that. 
But I can see some improvement. Some of the improvements were not that big. He has a lot of confusions. Okay. It takes time like this. Some of the line drawings like hands is okay. Good. What I actually have I have experienced before, okay, when it comes to draw in manual traditional method, right? Yeah? I find out that a lot of people who actually cannot draw, but they still can draw hands quite nicely. Okay? Some of them, right? So I think when draw hands, it's not that hard, right? but of course, you draw the different kind of positions, a little bit, a little bit going to be challenging. Right? I don't know whether okay, I saw maybe some of the improvement on the line. Right? Okay. I saw some improvements. It's not that bad because maybe because he doesn't have enough confidence that he would be for this. Right. Okay. So hopefully you know what 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 kind of bad or good kind of drawings there that will define back again our way of working. My kind of way right now when I draw basically today but not based on the perfect kind of drawings that I'm using a sketch line drawing set to work. Right. But of course I'm going to give you guys a very clear kind of picture set to work. Alright? If you want to draw from other people characters, okay, at the moment to develop your understanding to draw the, the structures, go ahead. Alright? It's okay there, but you guys can work on that. If you want to find some of the pictures from the internet that I did that, uh, let's just say we want to draw some sort of like as a practice, eh? as a practice, but not for our exercise. Manga, drawing. Right? Some of the wrappings that we have here, right? You just can just redraw them back using your Photoshop kind of methods of technique that it works, all right? Or uh, any one of you guys are still using sketchbooks that it works? Anyone using sketchbooks? I did show you guys also before this right okay, to draw using the sketchbook here uh, to define some of the way of working with those drawings. Anyone still using sketchbooks? Uh, teacher. Yeah. My computer Ooh. has have some problems, so I'm using sketchbook. Okay. What kind of problem you, you have? Uh, cannot work. Cannot do the work. Cannot work with tablet. Why? I don't know. Already, already, give the computer. Uh, studio to to fix. What happens? Then? I also don't know. Basically, when you plug in the tablet, then you cannot actually use the tablet to work. Right. right. What happens that the brush or uh, the strokes are going to be no pressures or what? The the pen the pen uh not not not. Not working. Yes. The computer also like uh lagging. Okay. What type of computer that you that you use? What kind of system that you use? Uh the computer is as uh, and the system okay. I don't know. Is the new version or the old version there? Okay, if you use manual there, okay? Draw mm -hmm. a circle like this. Okay, circle there. And then if the light came from over here, right. Can you paint the shadows over here? Soft line, okay? Paint the shadows over here. See? 
how I should define them. Add the shadows there. I'm using a circle kind of shading here, not paint like you, right? Circle kind of shading here. Let's see. Yes. Right, this is one of the ways you guys can practice the shading and shades. Light came over here, shadows fall off over here. Okay, you find that. You can see that. You find the shadows. If you use a uh, cone or triangle, the right two works. You want a cone and find it there. Light can come over here. The shadow will fall off over here. Okay. Shadow will fall off over here. There. But don't use erasers there, guys. The moments. Okay. Especially if you use those pencils there, right? Don't use erasers there. It works. It's very simple kind of shading some shadows as well. I'm going to give you guys some examples now. Let me say we have uh, what we call that. If I give you guys an example of faces there, for example, okay? draw the faces structure that way, right? Okay. Basic structure deficit. You find this the, the, the alignment there. Simple alignment there, right? And then what we can do from here, we draw the, the nose, the lips, the eyes, and maybe the hair there, right? It's like I draw your friend, it's not the right. So what you can do. You find the shadow surface. See the way one hand through it. You find the shadow surface. The shades of shadows that they define from the light, the source of light there. Okay? A very simple kind of exercise that I think just to define them, but if you want to add a bit more in the fields, then this goes in there, okay? Because I draw upside down, it is not there, right? If I want to draw back again, you can find the shadows here. Okay. So we need to draw basically the eyebrows over here. Then we need to draw the eyes. Between two eyes, the one eye was over here, right? Okay. You need to define the alignment there, right? The nose. Okay. And the lips, right? And then the faces. Even though we don't actually go into details there yet, okay? We are all these kind of matter factors. Just want to define a bit kind of methods of working with us, understanding of the light and shadows. Simple kind of exercise, but it will actually challenge your kind of understanding to control the medium itself, right? Control the medium itself, right? Control the medium. It's really challenging, right? If you use those pencils. Because why? Because you're going to trace or draw on top of it. Right? Those are the challenges that you guys have. Okay? So you have to rely on basically on your skills, entirely skills that okay, without having a lot of tracing set works and observations there. Alright, those are the things what challenge if you don't actually if you actually use traditional methods that you work. Because in traditional methods, um, normally we are going to do a lot of observation exercise that okay? You might not make you like that kind of drawing set because that drawings will go into more into continuous line drawings. I think we have to do a lot of continuous line drawings that we work. So that continuous line drawings, it doesn't define any perfections that based on the results 
from what we draw. But the understanding came from that the value of those drawings were based from my or your kind of observations, there, right? Because that's why when it comes to learn traditionally, okay, let's just say if I want to draw myself. Okay, I want to show you guys right now. Okay, this is my sketchbooks. I'm looking at the screen. I'm not looking at the papers. There. All right, I'm not looking at the papers. There. So I'm looking at the screens when I draw them. Okay? So what I'm going to do, okay, I'm, I'm using every kind of 80% of my my kind of eyes there to look to measure basically right my I cannot actually use uh, what we call that I cannot actually draw without not looking at myself okay? this is the observation exercise that I actually done with a lot of students are there to, to train their observation skills. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to draw myself, but I'm not looking at the papers. So I'm going to show you guys also the line that I've been making this one. I draw the nose. Okay. And my pen, when I draw the right way, I'm not actually take away or take off from those derivatives and draw this. Some people who actually have learned draw manually or they have the talent basically to draw the writing from, from his own skills, he always thought this kind of drawing is quite ridiculous. It's quite ridiculous to them. Why? Because it doesn't look like you learn basically to draw entirely in the right way. They don't actually find a very kind of Perfection in this problem. It's not about a perfection. So. Okay, if you want to see the way that I draw my hands using my hand right here, this is something that I draw right here. This is how I can move my hands. Continuous line drawings. Then goes when I actually draw, right? Using this tablet there, okay? But these blind drawings that we call blind drawings, then okay, it will be fine your understanding by looking at the subject matters there when you go right into this one drawing here so i try to draw myself without looking at the papers but i using my eyes to coordinate with my hands to get it there okay this is what why this is what basically i've done with, with a lot of students before this to to develop their observation skills there. i draw myself there, right but i didn't look at the papers there so the line are going to be a bit more not perfect, perfectly been, been drawn according to the normal kind of way of sketch. But this exercise will help a lot of people, including me, because I've experienced this kind of experience, this kind of drawings at the beginning of my lessons, learning about drawing in the right way in illustration. Okay? But a lot of people thought this kind of drawing is quite ridiculous there, right? Okay? If you if you if I if you thought ridiculous, okay, look at the result that I have right now. How actually I can teach you guys how I can draw it well, okay, but not entirely using only these techniques. But these techniques will actually help people to see things in the right way. Why? Because all about everything is all about how you look at things from now on. For example, there are you always ask people how actually people can draw well, okay? how actually he can draw well. It's not because of the hands, coordination about the hands, right? It's all about all these three combinations kind of elements there that I did told you guys before, right? If you're not actually connected between your eyes, mind, and hands together to coordinate these three parts together, right? When you draw, you don't you won't be able to see and draw the things that you saw in the right way. As simple as that. Because from the observations, blind drawing exercise, we have to define the whole detail, sections of the line. We, we have to define the whole thing that we saw 
you put a line into the constructions of those lines there. Even the my beard there, I think, and also the lips that I draw, the nose itself, I think, all the basic structure that I saw from here, right, when I draw, I transfer the whole thing into the line drawing set, right, into those kind of line there, okay? So, it's just like the, the methods that I draw, that I actually use, we just like we draw on top of our, of our face, but using the papers as support of the mediums to transfer the, 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 the information together there, right, okay? So these drawings, basically, I've done a lot, okay, back in the days that we have done for almost three semesters there in different subjects, there, okay, from basic drawing number one, fundamental drawing number two, and then we have the, the advanced drawing there, I think. If I remember that, I think. The, the name of the subject there. But the third, the third kind of semester that I actually attend for the advanced drawings there, I think, it makes me, it makes most of my friends also change the way they will look at things and, and, and develop our skill at but not all people can get it right. Because why? Because to adapt the understanding on the learning process of, of, of observe and absorb all this kind of information visually there, I think, it takes a lot of patience right, to work with it. It takes a lot of open up of your thought and mind there, right? because not all people can can really, really open up their mind. Like some, some of them, most of them, they take for granted that. That's why they not actually be able to draw entirely for the whole course of therapy. Sometimes, okay, they can actually design a draw. They can control the pressure there. They can control the strokes, but they don't actually have in that kind of understanding there. Because if, we, if this thing is easy directly, everyone will, will, will actually have succeeded. I'm not saying that what we call that, everyone actually will succeed. But my kind of objective here is not, it's not basically everyone will or draw exactly as I want directly. But how do you develop back again your kind of individual kind of understanding here? the most important thing, all right? Because back in the day, uh, back again, already, what we want to put, what we want to produce there, we want people who actually can sketch and design your kind of strokes, right? We want people who actually can develop their skills At least you just can sketch your line like this, right? This is one of the examples. I, I know that some of you guys also, most of you guys that okay, from this class has the, the potential to grow there. But if you can sketch a little bit more like this, a confident line, it's more than enough. You're not doing portraits, you're not doing a detailed kind of drawings. But the line that that you show here is full of confidence. All right, confidence. There. So we want to build up that confidence there first. To build up this confidence, take a lot of training. To develop this kind of trainings, you need a lot of sacrifice. Are you willing to sacrifice your times, your efforts? To develop your skills is your call. You the one who actually can answer this question. All right? If you ask me, Raki, is it worth it to draw like this? Okay. But because mm -hmm. I have to, for me, I have to improvise the lesson. Because we cannot actually push everyone actually work with this line drawing because why because we cannot actually face interact each other by the face to face because these drawings 
has to be done entirely from love. Face to face. There. That's what makes the drawing is the, the effective model, okay? But if you think that you say, sir, why actually when I draw, I always cannot actually draw exactly of what I see. My answer is because we not train our eye to see things first in the right way. We use our mind to control our thought and think. We don't use our eyes to give those informations to our mind to follow exactly what we see. Okay? You get it? And our hands doesn't follow the things that what we see. That's why we cannot draw in the right. Okay? That's why we cannot draw in the right. So look at this drawing that things There's a lot of very good confidence kind of drawings that so you just can go through with it basically. Look at these drawings here. See how they draw the structures there, right? Start with your basic, basic structures and they add the details, okay, one step at a time there, right? Okay, it's a very good example of that. Right, it's a very good example to draw the basic structures there. So whatever that you guys are going to do there, okay, be patient, learn from mistakes, make mistakes and try to overcome them. All right. Even though you're been working with the sketchbooks, okay, you are with the basic structures that is but learn from time. Pro learn one step at a time there. You saw basically how actually I did it, right? Follow them back and then find your own path there. Right? If you talk to anyone that is about styles, don't try to find any styles yet. Learn all the styles that you can you can actually imitate or 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 learn right at the stage. You will find your own style later on. Right? You will find your own style later. Right? Don't worry, the, the, the style will be developed, okay, as you actually improve your drawing skills. The standard, right? The style will came, will came into the, the, the time that you actually have to put your skills there. Okay, don't worry too much though, okay? I love manga styles there, blah, 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 right here. You want to draw entirely manga, I right? think make sure you draw perfectly done like manga style, right? for example, all right? Because I have a friend mine when I was high school. That time actually I take a second time I take in this new gas PT3 I take in a copy there. So I have one of my Chinese friends there, okay? It's quite a small guy there. I don't know what he's doing today. Um he can draw exactly like Maui Senior. You know Maui Senior. You know who is Maui Senior? Do you know who is it? No. Well, you say, you know, uh, my uncle. Uh, you know, uh, okay. Maui Singh is one of the uh, one of the comic artists that he actually create uh Storm Riders there. Uh. Right? He actually created these comics right here, yeah? they call Storm Rider. Storm Rider. If you're familiar with this kind of comics, right? I think it's around 90s there, yeah? okay? So this, this is not the guy there, right? Yeah? I don't think this is the guy there, right? but this is the guy that's one of the This is the guy. He's one of the legendary comic artists from Hong Kong. They fight together with Tony Wong right, eh? at the time. So it's two tycoon there, right, eh? of the Hong Kong Chinese comic industry. Eh? So this guy, also one of the tycoon in comic right, eh? uh, magazine, eh? he also can draw, right, eh? he actually draw like Tiger Wong there, right, eh? practice. This guy, a little bit more like a very soft, 
stone kind of stone statue. It draws stone by the statue. So these two guys is very popular there, I think. So one of my friends, I forget his name there, I think. Quite long there, I think. But when he, because I also like to draw, but I didn't, that time, I my drawing is not that good there. So when he has to draw the thing, his comic book, he always draw the thing. His drawings is look exactly like his comic book. He can draw any kind of characters, any kind of positions, but he can imitate his kind of drawing, his kind of illustration drawing style. There. But the problems that he faced, say to me, he cannot draw portraits. He cannot draw portraits, he can draw only this style. There. But at that time, we were around 15, 16 years old. Frank, he can draw like this. I really admire his skills there. But he said, he told me, he also won one of his friends at his area's housing areas, who can draw more exactly like this style thing. He said to me, I remember that. But I didn't actually, my kind of way of thinking about it, still today though, I didn't like to just copy other people's works. I love to improvise that somewhere. Why? Because if I copy exactly the right it doesn't give any kind of satisfaction to me. It's just like choosing some of the things like cars like right? If someone drives some of the cars the right way, even though I love that car, for example, but I don't like exactly like that car. Like I'm going to adjust this. But I'm not actually like a car kind of guy. I love to do a lot of modifications there. Right. Normally, I, I also love a very standard kind of uh, what we call that a car there, okay? But the thing is, we can actually put some accessories or change the kind of tires there, right? Okay? But not that too much. There, okay? A little bit more standard kind of so same goes like drawings or illustrations there. I love some of the certain styles there, but I didn't like to copy exactly that thing. I would improvise a little bit, modify a little bit to fit my kind of needs. Because back in it, uh, what we call that by the end of the day, I want to find some uniqueness on my presentation. Even though some people say, oh, your style looks a bit more like this, like this, like this. But they know we combined it together to become one of my styles. It's not exactly that. So that's how it gets. We can find originality on our style. All right. So, any questions? No. Is it? So I have question. Yes. Yeah, about the video presenting. Yeah. Is it we submit this week or week seven? Week seven. Because next week. So we. Next uh, week are going to be week six, right? Uh yeah. We yeah, are right. So that means next week we are going to do. I'm going to do some demonstration how to design a character that first. Right. To to give you guys also. Uh, one of the sample brief, okay, for our first assignment there, right? Okay, assignment there, assignment that regarding to character class. So that means those character design that you guys have to create were based on the basic shapes, characters, basic structures there. And then, when you going to submit your first assignments on week seven, uh, then you're going to create a videos presentation, right? Based on your first assignments. And also your previous kind of exercise, there. what you guys have been going through, right? Show a bit kind of your kind of explanation of understanding what you guys have been working on, right? Okay? Whether you understand or not, whether you have a challenge or hard time or not, okay? During the process, you can tell, you can explain on that video there. And by showing your work together, right? By showing also your work together, there, right? Okay? So it has to be. Presentation has to be show the work that you have to share your screen too, like when you when you present your work. You guys can use any kind of device, so you can record 
around five to ten minutes. I think I'm a little bit too late. Minimum is five minutes. Right? Minimum is five minutes presentation. It's very simple presentation. I just want you guys to, just like I show my work before there, right? So I talk about my works, single thing you guys talk about your kind of experience, learnings, and your 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 your, your weekly exercise and also your assignments. Right? The assignments that, that, that we look at, look into is not entirely purely like the real assignments that it's all about developing process. All right, whatever that you guys can go through from the exercise, even though there's a lot of things that you have to learn in the future, so. but you can see the result of your way of working there, right? okay, within these seven weeks of time there. All right, but one of the most important thing that you have to remember, the only thing that I want to see, only about your confidence. Confidence, the way that you actually construct your line, whether you're drawing characters, you're drawing faces, you're drawing boxes, I want to see those confident lines. When you have that confidence lines, you can draw anything you want it to. You want to draw a copy from other people's drawings. You have set your mind that you have developed that kind of way of working in confidence. You can develop the source in the right way. Right. There's no point basically for me to, to ask you guys to draw one single subject very detailed for a few days. But the the point is right now, the process that you've been with, when you draw one subject for two or three days, right? Okay? But the impact of your learning process of understanding is not there. I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of students who actually can can draw a lot of things. It's quite going to be easy for my job that basically they right. But the problem is that doesn't have a lot of impact. Because to be good at what you do, you have to practice a lot. That's all. Right, 10,000 kind of drawings in the right way, it might going to change your, your understanding of skills, but in the right way. But if you draw all those 10,000 drawings in time, Right, they don't even give any impact on your work very well, right? That's why. But it comes with a practice, though. it comes with a lot of practice. But every practice that we've been developed, say from 10 drawings, 15, 20 drawings, 24 drawings, that you've been working on the right, make sure each drawing gives yourself an impact on your knowledge and understanding. Of if we just simply draw just to submit your words, trust me one thing, you won't be able to succeed. You will end up to draw something like I have shown you guys before. Hesitation is kind of blind, no confidence, a lot of dirty kind of mistakes. Those are the things, those are the facts, right? Okay, anything else there? Pinky, okay, and the questions, are the answers there? Do you understand right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyone else? No? All right. If there is, any, if there is no any questions there, I right, thank you very much for having me today. Right, just waiting for my...